In one of our recent videos, we talked about how a collision between two neutron stars or a neutron star and a black hole could be catastrophic for the entire universe. Such an event is called a kilonova or a macronova, or sometimes an R-process supernova. In 2013, Hubble telescope revealed a new type of stellar explosion produced by the merger of two compact objects, which were discerned to be either two neutron stars or a neutron star and a black hole. This was perhaps the first time we clearly saw the cosmic objects colliding in a gamma ray burst. But the first kilonova was quite possibly observed in 2008. Welcome to Fact Nominal. And let's look at all the images that NASA's Hubble telescope has managed to capture of kilonovas. The images taken by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope revealed a new type of stellar explosion produced by the merger of two compact objects. It was either two neutron stars or a neutron star and a black hole. The galaxy in the center of the left image produced a gamma ray burst, whose lingering effects were visible on June 13th but had faded by July 3rd. NASA scientists called the new type of short but intense cosmic collision and conflagration a kilonova. That's an explosion so powerful it is 1,000 times stronger than a typical star explosion called a nova. The discovery possibly shed light on the origin of heavy elements such as gold and platinum. The wide view of the gamma ray burst 130603b showed its host galaxy and the surrounding area, and they are nearly 4 billion light years away from the Earth. The image shows at least two more adjacent galaxies making the spacecape look as magnificent as curiosity-inducing it is. However, the next pair of the image shows the galaxy in a close-up focusing on it exclusively, also displaying it before and after the explosion. Gamma ray bursts are the most intense outbursts ever detected, giving off as much energy in an instant as our sun will beam out during its entire 10 billion year lifetime. There are two kinds of gamma ray bursts, ones that are longer lived, lasting more than two seconds, and less common short lived ones, lasting about two seconds or less. NASA's SWIFT satellite measured GRB 130603b as 0.18 seconds long, while NASA's wind spacecraft determined that it lasted only 0.09 seconds. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope revealed that the near-infrared afterglow that accompanied GRB 130603b was the kind one would expect from a kilonova. This is smoking gun evidence that an explosive merger caused the gamma ray burst. However, according to NASA scientists, the evidence wasn't enough, citing that they will have to search and study more about kilonovas to be completely sure. But the 2013 images sure promised a lot about the kilonova process. On 17 August 2017, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, and the Virgo Interferometer both alerted astronomical observers all over the globe about the detection of a gravitational wave event named GW170817. About two seconds after the detection of the gravitational wave, ESA's Integral Telescope and NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope observed a short gamma ray burst in the same direction. In the night following the initial discovery, a fleet of telescopes commenced their hunt to find the source of this particular event. Astronomers located it in the lenticular galaxy NGC 4993, that is about 130 million light years away. A point of light was shining where nothing was visible before, and this set off one of the largest multi-telescopes observing campaigns ever. But of course, the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope was among these telescopes as well. Several different teams of scientists used Hubble over the two weeks following the gravitational wave event alert to observe NGC 4993. Praise the Hubble's high-resolution imaging capabilities, they managed to get the first observational proof of a kilonova. Hubble captured images of the galaxy in visible and infrared light, witnessing a new bright object within NGC 4993 that was brighter than a nova but fainter than a supernova. The images you are watching now displayed that the object faded noticeably over the next six days of the Hubble observations. Using Hubble's spectroscopic capabilities, the teams also found indications of material being ejected by the kilonova 
as fast as one-fifth of the speed of light. In May 2020, a team of scientists observed what is potentially the brightest kilonova detected so far. This one was associated with a short gamma-ray burst labeled GRB 200522A. Hubble Space Telescope observations showed that the radiation from this distant cosmological event didn't fit the profile scientists had come to expect from typical kilonova. According to the paper published on the observed event, the infrared light associated with GRB 200522A was significantly more luminous than any kilonova candidate for which comparable observations exist. The team was assigned to collect and combine observations from the Hubble, the Very Large Array, the Las Cumbres Observatory Global Telescope, and the WM Keck Observatory was led by Wen Fai Feng. She stated that Hubble was the deciding factor as it was the only telescope to detect infrared light. Amazingly, Hubble was able to take an image only three days after the burst. Hubble's spectacular resolution was also key in quantifying the amount of light coming from the merger. The Hubble observations were designed to search for infrared emissions that resulted from the creation of heavy elements like gold, platinum, and uranium during a neutron star collision. To the team's surprise, they found a much brighter infrared emission than anything anybody had expected. The reading indicated that there was an additional energy input from perhaps a magnetar. Magnetars are neutron stars that have an insanely super strong magnetic field. Clearly, this magnetar was the remnant of the observed merger. According to a co-author on the team, the kilonova discovered in 2020 outshines the one discovered in 2017 by miles. It was astounding for the team because most of them had been studying this phenomenon for more than 10 years. And yet, the very first one they discovered left them feeling like they know very little. This information made GRB 200522A different from all other potential kilonovae, because given what scientists know about the radio and X-ray emissions from this particular blast, numbers were not matching up. Hubble's read on the infrared emissions was over the roof with brightness. Simply, there was a piece in this puzzle that didn't mean to go with the rest of the picture. According to Fong, these observations do not fit traditional explanations for short gamma-ray bursts. In order to understand the exact levels of brightness and the distance of the origin, the team used WM Keck Observatory on Mauna Kea in Hawaii. In such cases, distances are important in calculating the burst's true brightness as opposed to its apparent brightness as seen from Earth. It is kind of similar to how the brightness of a light bulb depends on both its luminosity and its distance from the eye for how much time it will take to reach it. A gamma ray burst could be really bright, because either it is intrinsically luminous and distant, or not as luminous but much closer to the Earth. Thanks to the Keck Observatory, the team was able to determine the true brightness of the burst and thus the energy scale. They found that this kilonova was much more energetic than they originally determined. The biggest mystery that is intriguing scientists' fraternity is what is left behind in such a collision. Could it be a more massive neutron star or perhaps a newborn black hole? The fact that we see this infrared emission and that it is so bright shows that short gamma-ray bursts indeed form from neutron star collisions. But surprisingly, the aftermath of the collision may not be a black hole, but rather likely a magnetar. However, unlike 2017, this kilonova didn't give us a splash of gravity waves, so the magnetar theory definitely needs more evidence. A magnetar is part of the neutron star family, as it is an ultra-dense star with a magnetic field stronger than Earth's by a trillion times. Magnetars are sadly short-lived, well, at least by cosmic standards, with an age of perhaps 10,000 years only. That could be very well defined as ephemeral when it comes to star lifespans. But they are probably the best source of fast radio bursts, aka FRBs. Hopefully, follow-up observations in radio a few years down the line will be able to confirm whether there is indeed a magnetar behind this unexpectedly bright observation. And with James Webb Telescope's launch, things are going to be way brighter in the future for space exploration. Tell us in the comments how excited you are for the Webb Telescope and the human presence in space. And once again, thanks for watching Factnominal.